And welcome back, everybody. We are back for another stellar podcast filled with great topics that will keep you glued to your headset, I guess, the entire duration. You can quote me on that, but don't because I'm lying. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not. I don't know. Uh, it's going to be front page of Forbes now. Man lies just, on the internet. Man lies on the internet. We've never heard of this before. <laughs> the Arthur meme is true. Would people really lie on the internet? Well, find <laughs> out on this podcast. This um, is how you get person of the year for time or whatever the magazine is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, before we get to the show, we are going to have uh, a topic that we're going to discuss as members. And we're going to talk about George Lucas coming out and revealing that he's uh, a liberal, which he's been stating. Stunned, yeah. The entire time he's been in the public spotlight and making movies. I am shocked. Absolutely stunned. Yeah, he sided with the enemy this time. (laughs) This time. (laughs) The betrayal. Uh, It's, uh, but hey, uh, speaking of betrayals, uh, top 10 anime betrayals probably has happened in Mitch's life. Right, Mitch? You're here. Are you making a reference to Seven? I I am. Yeah, when uh, the game betrayed him on the date. It did. It did. Yeah, was, <laughs> it did. I was so, I was so mad. See, the I'm entire time like... up to that point, right? I had Tifa like in front, and I didn't want Tifa in front. And I managed to claw Ares to get maxed out, and then literally the eleventh hour, the quest before, you just go psych. Now Tifa's <laughs> maxed out. Now you get See, Tifa because they're tired. Like, oh, I'm taking really. my time so slow. I'm only at the part right now where we're doing the whole beach thing. So I got oh, a long Costa way Del to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, yeah, yeah. get into so, uh, the, the first real juicy bit. See, so I'm like riding around on the Segway trying to complete that whole, like, how many meters have you gone? So, oh, the 4,000? Yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm taking I love how they did the, um, the triggers on that. Because it's mm. not meant to go quick, so they have a ton of resistance on it. Then the second yeah. you get past that resistance, it just zooms up. Yeah, it does. It does. I'm like oh, constantly I'm crashing crash. through all the tables yep, and chairs yep. and <laughs> the I'm amount constantly... of murders I've committed in that game with that. <laughs> yeah, segue segue, is, yeah. is yeah. unprecedented. Uh, um, but you know what, Mitch? Maybe we're joined by somebody who has his own segue living over there in California where the rich people are at, right, Tristan? Uh well, in my part, if you counting rich means the farmers, then, then yeah. <laughs> but um I mean everyone knows farmers are rich, right? <laughs> right? Uh, but yeah, um, uh, just doing things, and I did see like this particular week is like really weird because a lot of drama, especially um, with uh, Hi-Fi Rush of all games. Oh. Um, for people who didn't know that they just released this week for PlayStation Five, and going through all the specs and what it can do, surprise, surprise, it's more optimized on PlayStation than it is on Xbox. I'm shocked. <laughs> every Stunned. time, every time. Another yeah. betrayal this week. What next? <laughs> Is that? And um, uh, I think uh, let's see what. Oh, it should have ended either by today or tomorrow, depending on when you guys are hearing this. Uh, they had Steam sale, so uh, yeah, check it out. There's a lot of games on there for sale. Are you sponsored by Steam? I wish. Are you and Gabe? Yeah. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Gabe is holding up that classic <laughs> giant Rambo knife, threatening Tristan. Yeah, kill me. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't have to threaten anybody because uh, I think it was a leaked email mm, between uh, sure. him and Epic oh. where they were getting mad at um, them not cooperating with Steam. Uh, mm-hmm. And Gabe just said, You mad, bro? Because he's not doing anything. <laughs> uh, Gabe is that meme of that, the, uh, the fat guy in the fedora. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. the, the, oh, defend yeah. the billion dollar company meme. That is actually yeah. okay. But, That's uh, Gabe. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Um, so there you go, everybody. Just a little to uh get you going for this. And uh now we're just gonna actually jump into the topics we have here. So let's get right into X-Men 97. Um we got two episodes to kick everything off, and as of right now, we just saw that pretty much across the board. Fans of X-Men, the animated series, love this. It is just a straight-up, like, perfect continuation of it. Um, There is, of course, the other side where I can't believe the X-Men have finally gone woke under Disney, which... Well, I know, it's my, terrible, my, right? Like, who'd have thought? Yeah. <laughs> my, oh, my problem is not even, like, that. 
It's um with the animation, which I found out that I think it was um the studio that they're using is I think it's Mur, I think. And yeah, yeah. which problem... completely stunned me because that came out when yeah. we recorded like last time yeah. about this. Yeah, and I was it's... like, oh yeah, it's clearly got some three D elements to it. They came yeah. out here, it's like, oh, it's all two D. <laughs> like, yeah, it, from what, what have you done? No, but what it, what people I found out is that it's mostly two D trying to emulate the old art style and in mm. some segments it has rotoscoping so that's why it seems off in some in some instances so i mean They're using rotoscoping yeah uh, that's, from looking at it, that's what that's what it was said that they're using some rotoscoping in, in certain scenes and stuff and that's, that's why it, i that's mean that's why to it me, looks like, weird i don't mind any of the animation because like yeah we could sit here and nitpick little pieces of it but again it's like I mean, I'm not like it nitpicking it want. so much. It's oh yeah, just, no, I know just, what you're saying. Just, yeah. yeah, it just seems a little off. Oh, you, I, so it's not something you see every day for yeah, 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 series, yeah. especially these days because everything's got to be done cheap. Uh, but slight confession, I haven't actually watched it yet. Oh, I didn't well, know it came out until you gave us the topic. <laughs> so luckily, like, we're not going to talk about out. we're not going to talk about too many yeah. spoilers. But I am seeing that a lot of people are automatically, you know. All the people I talked to that loved the old series, including, you know, like myself, then there's my wife who grew up on mm-hmm. it as well. Everybody's like, this is exactly what I wanted. Um, It picks up literally, catches you up quickly, tosses us back into the world. There are a couple things that I questioned, like, mm-hmm. like there's this moment in the first episode. It's not a giant spoiler, but like they're working on Sentinel tech and they're having to explain to like each other. And the people that are fighting and using Sentinel tech, what Sentinel tech is. I'm like, yo, this series starts in 92 and there were Sentinels like around downtown New York, you know, like it it seemed a little weird, like a little disconnect here just in terms of story. But I get it. They got to catch up to normal people that might not have seen it. Right. So my only big fault is like it's a reintroduction and sometimes it's a little too expositiony, but it doesn't take away from how great. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah, like, positioning. <laughs> yeah, like I think one one thing people did or were sad to see that they didn't put in the show is uh, I think it was um, the recap, the little recap thing yeah. in the beginning yep. of the episode. It's like last time on X Men or yeah. previously on X Men, it wasn't there. They could have attached You'll that probably to many YouTube three. video. Yeah, Maybe, no, if they put two out in the first week, then episode three is going to have it. I bet you. Mm-hmm. Just bet yeah, it needs a little bit of a catch up because it's like, hey, if you don't remember. Uh, Charles Xavier is dead at the end of the old series. You're like, wait, what? And this series, just like, oh, oh they assume you know. It's like, outside of that, though, I love everything about it. Yes, the actors have obviously grown older and their voices aren't the same. But... <laughs> and not everyone is there because some of them have sadly died. Yeah. And again, overlooking those things, the team composition is great. I love how they aged up like everybody and there are different points in their lives uh gene gray has always been one of my favorites in that series and i love what they're doing with her here like you know wolverine's I, grown a foot by the look of things <laughs> yeah, 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 um, yeah he's grown a little he's, yeah so, so, oh, so it's jackman's wolverine now cool. probably <laughs> wolverine. Um, because you'd be surprised at how um a- actors and actresses can influence characters to make it similar for people who are just getting into a certain medium so i mean they have something that's familiar to them remember say, that uh, after with... like 15 years of the mcu i'm not surprised and no one should be surprised by that yeah that happened with the uh, x-men evolution originally when that show yeah, was coming yeah. out they were talking to fox and lining things up and that's why logan and that is a little bit more you know movie like and then it, it's it, there is some of that in here which again i don't mind What I do love about it is that they straight go back to, hey, here's the X-Men. And also, we flip everything on its head because Magneto now. You know, this isn't a spoiler. They reveal it in the trailers. Mm. He now leads the X-Men because that was what Charles left. And automatically, there's this power pole position vacuum type story that comes in there. And even Cyclops is like, you know, um, I guess I'm going to fall in line because that's what I got to do. And he I'm, shows more. I'm Cyclops. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he shows a little bit more backbone, but also there's just a lot going on in here that Marvel Studios has shown everybody with this. If you are worried about MCU X Men, you should not be worried because they nail no, it. Like no. it's 
they nail everything to the point where we're watching the opening episode and like I paused because I had to go get a drink because I forgot it. And the wife looks at me and she goes, is it just me? Or are these guys working and stealing Sentinel techs and storming this um, courthouse? Is this a parallel to January 6th? That was like, there's actually scenes that look like them climbing the wall straight up ripped and animated in this. I was like, there's definitely That's a parallel they're... here. <laughs> <laughs> it's It's here, so... I understand why some of those people are pissed at it because they're, you know, like yeah, getting shocked that they're the bad guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, I don't know why they're getting shocked because it was in the original because series. Because they're well. illiterate, Tristan. That's why <laughs> they, they have not got the the frontal lobe to actually comprehend that they like, are um, in fact not nice people. <laughs> like to go back to what I mean said, um, when people saw this scene, they said this is not in the original X Men, and then someone posted, I think a small snippet from the original series, oh yes, Rogue's racist dad wouldn't be there on January 6th, and he, he yeah. looks just like the person. <laughs> they man's at the front leading the charge, like, come on now. Yeah. Like, so overall, we're not going to spoil anything, I just wanted to kind of quickly talk about some of the impressions and reactions. They are good. I mean, right now, Rotten Tomatoes, the reviews for the first two episodes are perfect. Across the board, you read every review, everybody's like, this is what we want from the X-Men. So, it's a template that if Marvel Studios follows in live action, chef's kiss. It's going to be perfect, especially say, this version, you know? Yeah, there's there's never been, a, at least for me, right, a worry about how Marvel's going to handle the X-Men. Because you go back and you look where Foggy started with the whole being with Singer and, or not mm -hmm. where he started, but, you know, the first big yeah. thing he was on those movies. Uh, it's a personal thing for him, right? Oh yeah, like you know, he he tried giving everyone these comic books on set, and then twenty odd years later, whatever it is, you know, yeah. he can he's finally getting the crack into actually right the wrong with those movies. So exactly, and like if you go back and watch some of the old old footage from behind the scenes and stuff, right when they're shooting it, and it's like, hey, here's the stuff. I want you to pay attention to where Kevin Feige was because people say that one of the best scenes that nailed the X Men in that entire Fox run is when Bobby goes home and they're, they're, you know, his mom is like, have you tried not being a mutant? You know, hey, have you tried mm. not being homosexual? Thing like that. Feige was the one that was fighting for that scene. And he's literally yeah. in the background when they're shooting that. And that's mostly, he understood the X-Men from the start. And this is his victory lap. And you can tell, like, he is proud of what they're going to be able to pull off. So yeah, uh, after this, these two episodes, I have no doubts that Marvel Studios is going to deliver what we want from the X-Men. And that's kind of my takeaway here. It's exactly what I wanted from X-Men and it's here. So no complaints. Good. I, I can't wait to watch. I'm, I'm probably going to wait until it's all said and done. That's it's honestly like, smart. I want to rewatch yeah. the original. The lead up yeah. as well. I haven't I watched that I... thing since I was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wish good. I would have rewatched it because I needed a brush up on it. So I'm probably yeah, going to go right. back and watch it. <laughs> Hopefully, um, Marvel Animation sticks to quality and that yeah. what was happening in What If, because, yeah, I don't want to say that. that. What If and everything else, the, the actual Marvel Studios animation engine <laughs> is not nice to look at. It's so bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, like, so with with this being good, I am hopeful for, was it Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man? Oh, what yeah. That was called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's never going to come out. <laughs> Tristan's oh, on the no. copium heart. No. They they work they finished the first season there were uh, yeah, something yeah, they were you see, say that that's that's what they say that's what they Where say up it? until it just vanishes um but yeah it's been so like six years <laughs> it has it really has it's but it was announced like along with Blade or whatever that's almost five years to the announcement this July so hey wasn't it the 2019 yeah phase three, yeah 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 phase four yeah. announcement like, yeah. yeah they got pushed back a while and then like people wondering yeah. where it was and they asked. Um, animators and artists on the team, and they said eh, the first season's done. <laughs> yeah, so, I, no, I got fired off that thing. Who knows? <laughs> exactly. But um, I guess we're gonna jump on to the next uh, Disney topic we have here, which is the sudden announcement and the push for Star Wars: The Acolyte, the upcoming series that um is coming out this June. They announced the episode release dates. You know, releasing weekly. When it starts on June 4th, drop the trailer, the poster, the synopsis, uh, 
it's a full blown, like, Hey, we got like three months to hit you with this over the head. And we're starting now ahead of star Wars, you know, <laughs> next month and a month after that, getting a big push. And, uh, from everybody I've talked to and everybody that's a star Wars fan, they seem pretty hyped for this because it's not like anything we've seen before from star Wars live action, which I think is the key here. So I'm pretty hyped. I say I, I'm excited for it. Though. I was just when I, I was excited for when they announced it. Just just the name alone and the premise of it. It's like you know what? It's something yeah. slightly different. You know, it's not in the main period of Star Wars, that thirty year span or whatever it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they dropped that poster with the lightsaber and the blood. And it's yeah. like you know what? That might be the best poster Star Wars has ever had. So it, I'm, it's <laughs> just I based it on is. that alone. I'm in. Yeah. I mean, to me, it was like the best first poster for Star Wars. It's up there in like top three because yeah, it's different. It's striking. It's like it just it, it invokes a different feeling. And then as it's somebody a complete who, tonal shift from everything, like even exactly. Andor, like it's a complete right. tonal shift. And like watching the trailer and then thinking about where we're going and being a huge fan of the High Republic, like, you know, the books, the comics, whatever. I was absolutely blown away with the fact that they're clearly in that world. It's just years Mm. later. Some of the characters from the books and the comics are in the trailer. Like they are there. And I am just hyped to see a hundred years before episode one, how like Coruscant looks right. All these Jedi walking around, they think it's peaceful. And then suddenly it's like, yeah, what's a Sith? You know, they've been training for this their whole lives but they never thought they would face someone that's a Sith, right? And suddenly their world is flipped upside down. And they just went through a mini war from like this faction outside of known space to them as they were expanding. That's what the High Republic is about. So it's like Mm. they throw us into this turmoil-ish style of Star Wars world where it's at, where it's like, well, have at it. And how do you handle a Sith that you've never had to deal with? because you've only read about it or seen it in like, you know, a recording or something like I hate to break really... it to you. You just described episode one. I did. Yes. But also <laughs> this is before that. So they're going to be like, what? Like what? It's like, yes, but it's not episode one. So therefore, exactly. Good. I don't have to deal with, Hey, I know where this is going. Like there's a chance anybody in this can die. You know, it's like fresh. Yeah. yeah. You know, you watch the prequels. You're like, is Obi-Wan going to die? Of course not. You know, like it took the stakes out of it. Here I'm like, well, anybody could go. And them talking about how this is a different style of Star Wars series, different style of storytelling. I'm like, okay, I'm willing to set aside any complaints I might have had with just small little things in this and just wait to see it. But on the Mm. other side, the other side of the fan base is like having a meltdown because I I guess no aliens, despite they're clearly being aliens. Yeah, <laughs> like there's quite clearly a Wookiee Jedi, and that Wookiee <laughs> Jedi has a top knot. So if you're going to moan about anything, complaining about a shaved head Wookiee, because that's oh, what they that, should that be. Thing just wrong. I think I think what they would are going to know. complain about, or will complain about, is that he that that particular Wookiee's you can only understand them uh, by subtitles. Mm. Good, good. We need more of that <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> Uh, it's there's just i don't know i really love this trailer it got me it gave me that feeling of star wars that i really haven't had since like the force awakens trailer where it's like oh it's something unknown we're going into an area where you don't know what could happen with new characters you haven't heard of or you know really explored in live action it's and then they hit again, you with the remake of a new hope <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep it's, no i remember those I, I like the idea of the of the High Republic. I, I don't do the Star Wars homework like the book, so I'll do the, the shows at most. Right. But the, the High Republic stuff is always interesting to me just from the outside of it. So I, mm-hmm. I get that like Mandalorian feeling here. Yeah. Where I you know, I, I knew nothing about Mandos going in before that. Yeah. And then yeah. it's like cool, a, a different part of the Star Wars. Just just a different part. I'm all here for it. I'm just, I'm waiting for a twist where at the end of like the second or whatever episode, right? Probably the end of the first episode, it's going to be like, Master, you never told me what is your name? And the person's going to turn around and be like, 
Steve. It's like, uh, oh, oh, you're the I mean, great grandfather of Palpatine or whatever. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, I, I'm here expecting we go. the Palpatine, yeah, Palpatine set up here somewhere. Uh-huh. But, um, <laughs> it's like you know, oh. like Carrie Ann Moss, because yeah. I'm certain she's in it. Like, I'm, I, I'm not 100 sure, but I, she's either gonna die or she's gonna be the acolyte. Yep, hundred percent. That's the vibe. That, I that's got. my like bold prediction. Uh, I, I'm expecting something like that, and some sort of twist related to her. Like she's gonna be, I don't know, like she's gonna report to Darth Plagueis or something at the end <laughs> of the. You know, it's gonna it's gonna be something that's like ah, I thought we were getting away from this. <laughs> you know, that's my only concern. But otherwise, whatever. I like everything I'm seeing. I'm hyped. It's mm. it's looking real good. Real good. I also don't understand how people are going on about how the, the Sith can't be in this because they didn't exist back then. And so they didn't exist in episode one, but lo and behold, guess what? They did. Yeah. <laughs> like it's when they say they don't exist, that's not them telling you a fact. It's telling you right. what they think it is true. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. It's just the setup yeah. for the show. And then surprise, they do exist because we need conflict in this thing. Yeah. But hey, Star Wars <laughs> grifters aren't literate, so well, no, I yeah, it's like I, if you like read or listen to any sort of like high fantasy or sci fi media, there's going to be legends that characters either think are real or, or not real, or you know, yeah. Yeah. think things or images don't exist. And in some particular instances, instances, a certain version of it does exist, and then oh no, how can we stop them? It's that, hey, do you remember Lords of the Rings where Sauron was dead and mm-hmm. everyone thought that and then they didn't yeah. listen to anyone when he was coming back? <laughs> yeah. It's almost uh, like it's called a plot. <laughs> I will have you know, Mitch, that is too woke for me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I did not, in fact, pay attention. <laughs> I mean, bricks and screw, so screws are too woke for them anyway. So mm-hmm. True, true, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. One thing I'm, I'm surprised about is that it, it might have been talked about online. I, I haven't been looking because mm-hmm. shock, I am addicted to rebirth in a minute. <laughs> but I haven't really been looking yeah. anyway. But um, I haven't seen anyone complain about that poster because <clears throat> it's a lightsaber and it's got blood coming out of it. Like, that, that doesn't make sense because it cauterizes the wound, the wound, right? So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one it's, thing that I was expecting uh, to see a ton of kickback. I know it's just a poster, right? But I was, I was expecting a ton of kickback on it. Well, no, I think the reason is is that people don't realize that that's what actually would happen if you got hit with one. I was going to say, well, yeah. technically, because you see, you know, when Darth Maul got ripped in half, you still see a blood splat, right? But it's catarizing yeah. quickly. So I remember like the red spray mist, right? From a sh- like oh section. yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, he gets yeah. a little yeah. bit from the bottom of the screen, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. So I think you get yeah. a little, so that's kind of what yeah. it is. Uh, that's my just my look at it. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's not that I'm complaining about it. It's like I adore that poster. As I said yeah. earlier. But yeah. No. It, it, it's really out of cool. all the things for someone to complain about, I'm stunned. I haven't seen anyone it's, complain about that. No, I, <laughs> I, I think the basic reason for that is like if it looks cool energy, then no one's really going to complain about it. Yeah. Even, yeah. If, it, even if it is wrong. <laughs> So it's like blood and glow, glow, blood yeah. and glow. So <laughs> it pleases the small thirteen-year-old boy's mind. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. So, like, no, I'm excited. No. Yeah, I'm excited. We're gonna obviously watch. We'll talk about it because hey, it's more Star Wars, and we want to see what it's about. So. No, we we won't talk about it. Jared will barge his way on here. That's so true. He can talk yes. about it, and we'll just be like, true. yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, yep, 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 yep. That yep. sounds right, Jared. Yep, yep, That's right. Yep, yep. Hey, Jared, and Boar, and then 30 more minutes after. Here we go. See, if I messaged him right now to say you just said that, nothing will happen. <laughs> it's only when I say and or bad. After this, I'm going to just text him and Boar, and I'm probably just going to get a roll eye emoji or something. I need a screenshot. <laughs> I well, there we go, everybody. That's a little about Star Wars. We'll be back to talk more about it soon. But... Now we're going to talk about Marvel Studios MCU canon because obviously they canonized the Netflix shows and people are like, well, what's next? So Marvel's head of TV, Brad Winderbaum, was directly asked about 
the rest of the shows, specifically Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And his statement was, now that we got the Netflix stuff in, we are tackling Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the rest of Marvel TV next. He's just confirmed to us without saying 100% that yes, kind of- we're going it, to, it's coming back. Were they just coming out and just straight up saying, hey, you're going to see Quake or X, Y, and Z in this is a spoiler. They don't do that. Remember how they talked about mm-hmm. Daredevil and She-Hulk? They're like, well, if you pay attention, we're going to tell you more soon. And then here comes Echo and it's canon. When one of the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. pops up somewhere, maybe Secret Warriors or something, who knows? It's canon. And they're going to retroactively add it timeline wise to the but, Disney Plus lineup, oh, you know? Watch it be Ghost Rider. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh. if rumors is believed, the Ghost Rider that they're bringing in is not the one from S.H.I.E.L.D. So, I mean, it why makes they gotta, sense. Why they got to do them like, like that, man? <laughs> because I don't want, I don't want Johnny Reyes, have man. Robbie Ray as, as a Ghost Rider. We have to have the white stuntman or his uh, clone, the, 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 the other white non stuntman. I mean, yeah. It, it makes sense how you're going to do Ghost Rider. You introduce one. It's a fresh old origin. In his movie, you explain, or his whatever, you explain, hey, other Ghost Riders exist. You've probably interacted with them. You just don't know because when the spirit takes over, your mind is kind of lost in it, right? It's like, mm. oh, that explains Robbie Reyes and the passing of the powers and all this. Like, It's such an easy thing to do. Robbie will be back. I have no doubt Robbie will. Oh, a hundred percent. Like we, we're gonna see. I imagine a more accurate version of Robbie. Yeah. I can't remember the guy who played him in Shield. No disrespect to him. I think he's a great actor. He's on. You know, Last of Us. He's fantastic. Oh, Gabriel um, Luna. That's the one. I don't know why I forgot his name. But um, yeah, Gabriel Luna's great. So maybe we get an Easter egg with him. For me, if I was like Winter Barman, Foggy in that, I I can't remember exactly where the last season of shield left them off Mm -hmm. but i know they weren't in the timeline that they started out in yeah i know that's the implication so i don't don't, obviously i can probably retrofit it so it's just if you want to keep the entire show you go right cool well they started out in a different timeline they've now ended the literal the show ends in the mcu and you yeah yeah so it leaves right. you completely open. Everything stays there. You can carry on. You've got all the character development. You've got everything. So I do believe, I think it was like, what, end of season five or something, where Thanos is literally attacking New York. And as the events are happening with Doctor Strange and like the Hulk fighting, you know, like Ebony Ma and stuff, we literally get the other side of New York and the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are doing that whole thing. And then they go into space. From that moment on, they get flung to the future. It's a separate timeline. So yeah, yeah, you could even acknowledge that they travel through time and there's parallel universes now bending back on itself, which is what they explained in Loki. Or you just say, hey, those guys went off and that's a parallel thing. But the agents that you saw season five, things played out slightly differently. And there you go. Like it's, mm. it's not that hard. Like look at the Netflix shows, right? There's things in there that literally are referencing what's happening in agents of shield. Like I I think it was Jessica Jones season two. There's moments in Luke cage. Like it's all there. Like why wouldn't you make it all Canon? Because they're not going to reboot these characters. That's why they decided to make daredevil Canon because it's like, what's the point of rebooting while all the leg work has been done. You know, it's yeah. Though I don't buy what Winterbum said, where he's like, "Oh, there's there, there's people wanting to know." It's like, no, you knew. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't give us this absolute bull crap of your surprise yeah. that people gave a crap about this being, you know, in Calling or not. Yeah, you absolutely one hundred percent knew. Mm-hmm. You're just trying to save face because you weren't. There was a point where it wasn't going to be because exactly you told like the writers and stuff to act like it's not Calling. Yeah. And there's an old interview. I went and I dug it up just like the other day ago when he was talking about it. And it was from Marcus and McFeely writing Infinity War and Endgame. And they Mm. specifically said, and Kevin Feige was there with it like when they were doing the interviews. And they said, we looked at Marvel TV. We were writing Daredevil into it. But then we realized there's too much homework for people to do with these characters to show up. And it was such a huge undertaking that we decided not to write them in. 
So at some point, yeah, weren't they, they doing that with Civil War it. as well? Wasn't he yeah. going to be yep. on one of the other sides? But they're yeah. like, you just can't fit this guy <laughs> right. in this movie. So stuffed as it is, he can't. And fit him in. you know, retroactively, if you look at what they said there and you look at it now, that argument holds true because people are like, hold up, I got to watch Wandavision to understand Doctor Strange too. I got to watch. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So it's they the Star were right. Wars problem, right? It's just you know, you want to understand Ahsoka like completely. Go yeah. watch seven seasons of Clone I, Wars. I can't tell like, you then, how many times I pause to explain to Shay what is going on in Mando because she knows I know. And she's like, okay, uh, explain this to me. I'm like, it's, it's, well, it's kind of <laughs> ironic because like some of those people are the very same people who, who will complain about recap episodes because they yeah. need to figure stuff yeah. out. And then it's all, <laughs> oh, well, we just made this episode just for you. This is boring. Yeah, it's, uh, people are wild. People are wild. So what was it? There was something the other not that long ago. That the uh, first episode was like a recap or something. Completely blanking on it. I, I <laughs> yeah, something I recently watched also had that effect. I was like, wow, this is a lot of recapping, huh? <laughs> yeah, I just can't think uh, what it was. <laughs> I've completely lost track of every, anything I watched this year. Yeah, that is how it happens. That is how I've been on autopilot because Invincible's been away. That's what it is. Oh, <laughs> well, it's like I am a fan of bringing everything into canon. Uh, besides Hellstrom, because nobody watched that. Just don't bring Hellstrom into. Ca- I don't care that they reference the rest well, of the Marvel Hellstrom universe. Hellstrom ever canon? <laughs> no, it, apparently because they reference events. There's small references in there. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah, but nothing okay. survived long enough to reference Hellstrom, so does it count? Right. Exactly. So just pick that out. <laughs> You know, like, if a tree yeah, makes yeah. a reference to the forest in the woods and no one's around to hear it, does it actually make a reference? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, um, yeah. I this just gives me hope for cloak and dagger, and I'm gonna not remain like stuck in this time of begging for cloak and dagger anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I spent years <laughs> and finally got it just to have it stripped away from me. Now I'm begging again to have him back, and it's like, come hey, on, look, bring cloak and dagger. Straight up mentions events happening on the Netflix show and. The Netflix shows kind of lean into the rocks on accident and everything, so it's all there. It's it's got to be canon. I, I demand Cloak and Dagger and Spider Man Four. I don't care about Daredevil. Just give me those two. Uh, <laughs> school students. If I don't I see know. Cloak and Dagger and Spider Man on the screen together in my lifetime, I am going to haunt someone hard. We got to haunt the, uh, I don't know, whoever directs Spider Man Four. I, I'll just haunt the Disney lot for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. It's some like hacking California's game, but like, oh, this ghost, it's, uh... <laughs> the, the ghost of this British guy won't go away. <laughs> How did he get here? No one knows. <laughs> no one knows. No one knows. Just like floated. I'm a ghost. No, I'm not bound by any laws of physics. Well, you know what, Mitch? We were talking about Disney making things canon and announcements. So let's talk about D23 coming at us this year. Oh. Disney sent out the press release. August 9th, 10th, and 11th, three days of D23. They confirmed multiple times Marvel Studios announcements are being made here. We're going to be revealing the future of Marvel Studios here. Oh, I am so excited to see Kevin Feige walk out on stage, sit on the edge, spark up a ciggy, and just be like, look. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I Stuff think... ain't gone right. Because yeah, with, yeah, with, with all the press something. releases, with all the press releases, it was kind of some surprise how they're making this like its own con in a way oh 100 this is what cut. they've been building to right they've been, yeah because yeah i've seen it like they're not just doing the anaheim convention center it's spilling out into uh downtown disney as well because mm-hmm. as people who don't know uh the anaheim convention center is like across the street from disneyland so you can literally just walk across the street and go and into disneyland the one thing i took note of is like if you're looking at this thing how they're selling tickets now and how they're having like vendors and stuff. This is that like Avengers con that was rumored and Marvel yeah. studios was even like, mm-hmm. well, we might, this is straight up going to be the first year where they're kind of leaning into that. And if it's big and it will be, cause there's like front row tickets to watch the presentation for $2,000. <laughs> I was going to no, say it's a, it's a down payment for a month's rent in California, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. The pain, yeah. For in the city, that's, it's about right there. <laughs> Imagine, uh, and just this to put is this capitalism at its finest. Like, yeah, to put this in perspective, um, 
D23 has its own merchandise. Like, I was looking yeah. at official D23 20, uh, 2024 t-shirts that it claims that you were here. And I'm like, I know those are going to be expensive, but who in the right mind would want to buy them? Bro, if you go to D23, like, if you went a couple years ago and you go this year, if you get your hands on one of those exclusive Disney Lorcana cards, oh, yeah, you I know can about put them. a yeah. $8,000 down payment on any car you want Jesus. easily by reselling that yeah. card. It Jesus. Disney yeah, knows what they're doing here, and yeah. this event is going to be big. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, oh, yeah, that, yeah. when that happened, that was, that was crazy because I think there were advanced promo copies that you could only get at that event at that particular time. So, yeah, yeah. Yep. Like, stuff is people wild. go crazy for little pieces of cardboard. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Just because it's, it's like Disney the, um, and it's limited. I mean, it's not even just the whole Disney thing. There was the um, Picasso Pikachu. Oh yeah, I remember that. Candle I remember that. a couple of months back. <laughs> yeah. and it just was, got scalped to hide. Yeah, for that one, it was funny because it's not like a good card in any sense of the word. It's just that it was a Picasso Pikachu card, mm. and yep. it, you, I think it, I think it was really relatively either relatively cheap or you only had to pay for a ticket, and they gave. Yeah, you, you just card. got in, and got yeah. it. Yep. Yeah, and then people just started like asking people on the street, "I'll pay you some money if you give me the card." And right. That's when the uh, museum said, "Yeah, we're not doing that anymore." Cause and like <laughs> Disney has cultivated this fan base, and now they have Star Wars and Marvel announcements are coming. Mm. The thing that stands out to me is like they. In there, they talk about, oh, this Marvel presentation, talking about the future, right? Mm. Kevin Feige is going to stand on stage. It's going to be the same as last time. But he's going to have to seriously acknowledge that literally at that point when D23 happens, five years and two weeks prior to that was the announcement of Blade and Armor Wars. And they're yeah, still not yeah. here. So, what, so he, he, oh. he needs to clear stuff up. Yeah. And I... Yeah. I, I I highly doubt he's going to do it in any satisfactory way, or even if he's going to yeah. do anything. It doesn't seem like five so, style to kind of so do anything like that. But we, we've never been in this situation before with this studio. Yeah. And the, the studio. Also, like, so maybe they, they do, maybe they don't. We'll just have to wait. And so see. do you think they're just going to say, yeah, they're coming, but we'll save the actual announcement for a later date? I think yeah. what he does is this is how I can see Feige actually doing it. No, he's going to come out here. He's going to make some like offhanded, snarky remark about how everything's gone. He's like, you know, we've grown at some few problems or something like that. Yeah. And then he's just going to move ahead about this is the update. This is the yeah. update that release schedule. Wait. Here's some new projects. Get hype so, about this one particular PNG because it's coming. So I'm looking <laughs> right now at the upcoming 26, 27, and 28 films, right? There's Untitled Star Wars in 27, Avengers Secret Wars. And then in 26, right, there is uh, one, two, three untitled Marvel movies and a bunch of untitled Star Wars and Pixar things. This is the blowout where you announced everything in 26 officially, the 27 slate, and possibly even 28, because you got to come out and be like, hey, Armor Wars is happening. Here's the date. Here's where we moved Secret Wars. Here's that unknown slate, right? Because... There's so many missing projects and gaps. Like he, this is where they're going to reveal the likes of Wonder Man. Because yeah. outside so like, of us, the normal population doesn't mm -hmm. know that's a project. Also, right? what's canceled, right? If this, yeah. if the whole yeah. rumors of canceling is true, which I, I just said they've canceled stuff quietly. Yeah. What mm -hmm. exactly has been canceled? Obviously, if it is Eternals too. God rest my heart. <laughs> or God save my heart. They, they, right. they wanted. They, they, they never oh. announced it. They obviously, they were working on it, but they never announced. So they, yeah, did they even acknowledge no, that, that some stuff's been cancelled and yeah. stuff like that. Like, if no, if they haven't announced it. anything that's been cancelled, like, do they actually still yeah. say we we're not moving along with this yeah. plotline anymore? Which would be nuts. yeah, they will they, they will acknowledge it in like some small reporter who actually at, like continues to ask them in like some really small internet. Blog. So it'll be Steve it, Weintraub from Collider <laughs> asking Mackie some so, dumbass question. Again. I do want to point this out because this is what sticks out to me. <clears throat> About three weeks after D23 is fiscal quarter end for that. Like that quarter ends and that's mm -hmm. when we're going to get the Disney report. Stock is going to skyrocket after D23. Mm -hmm. I think they stay silent on what's canceled. And then when Bob Iger does the update a couple of weeks later, talking about how yeah, great stock yeah. is, and that's when they're like, we assess the situation of X, Y, and Z. 
turns out why doesn't really work but <clears throat> these characters will return as we just announced there's plans <laughs> don't worry about it and just it's going to be one of those double one month announcements like, right like yeah, that like, do, do you guys do you guys think like they will take this opportunity to at least announce that like officially announce that Spider-Man 4 is you know on the table yes oh yep. easily yeah yeah yep. yeah you, you he, here's the thing right they're going to stick to the big we need to get people back on board and get excited what they're going to talk about, they're going to tell you about the new Avengers, they're going to tell you about Spider Man, they're going to talk about Fantastic Four, they're going to tell you when the first X Men thing is coming. They're going to announce, going like, to like, when they, like, when they announce Fantastic Four with the logo, we will get one more thing. It will be the first announcement of X Men and that they hired writers or something in the logo, right? Spider Man yeah. will be announced. And I think you're looking at a more. They're also going to tell you who the new Wolverine is going to be. Right. Like, a couple of things 100%. to really get people to chat about everything, right? Because they know the last two years have been their hardest. We're going to get our first look at Daredevil guaranteed. Poster, sizzle reel, yeah, something yeah, is happening. Yeah. Like, they know all eyes. Like, D23 is what's covered by, like, you know, CNN, CNBC, Good Morning America, you know, Fox local affiliates in, like, upstate New York cover the events they know this is the world's eyes on Disney. So mm -hmm. this has got to be the most strategically carefully placed like announcements. And here's the future of Marvel they've ever done. They can't come out like they did one D 23 when they did that presentation, announce a bunch of things that are all going to get canceled or not happen. It yeah. they'll look foolish again. So it's, it's going to be interesting. I'm definitely, you know, that's what I else they got to tell us. There's the TV slate, right? Because yeah, <laughs> we don't really know much anymore of what what's going on with half of it. We know Agatha's coming out this year. I think mm -hmm. this year. Yeah, it's, it's I know year. Winderbaum's talked about Einhart recently, so we know that's coming at some point. Um, and then there's like Wonder Man and Daredevil, and that's Wonder it, Man. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like apparently, then, Vision Quest was one of the shows cancelled. So it was going oh! on. With that. Yeah. Heart. Damn. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's I crazy. think I think they're gonna announce the new TV slate, and what we're gonna get is like, hey guys, guess what didn't work? Two hundred and fifty million dollar Disney Plus series. So you're gonna get forty to fifty million, eight to twelve episode street level characters. Have at it. And that's fine. To me, that is fine. I, like, I, I'm not sure if they go to street level or not. I think they just kind of dial dial the amount back, like the, mm -hmm. the actual quantity of shows. Also, probably the budget a little bit, but I don't think they yeah. just segregate TV to street level. Yeah, I, like you look at stuff like One Division. That's not, <laughs> ironically, it's a street, but it's not a street <laughs> level show, right? So yeah, it's, yeah. It's a well, bit higher than that, even though. But it's. I think we get into that position where it's like, hey, Daredevil, we're gonna do a Punisher series, maybe Heroes yeah, for Hire, yeah. huh? You guys like that? It's like we're gonna have know. a crack at Defenders again without oh, <laughs> Sigourney <laughs> Weaver taking the role of an Asian character. Yeah, you, yeah, get, the, yep, you yep. get the occasional boo into the into the stands and. If I can yeah. get them removed, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I, mm -hmm. I think because there's the whole thing about um, the, the reason why the VFX is bad, quote for these shows, is because it's like the lack of a vision, right? Right, like, isn't Dune being made for cheaper than these shows? And it's like, yeah, people saying it looks insane. So, you that level of VFX is obviously obtainable, it's just they need a clear. Maybe, solid maybe, idea yeah. of what the show's going to be about. So if yeah, you yeah. have less shows, you have more time for each individual one, and therefore yeah. you can do it slightly cheaper, and the VFX is going to look better for it. Right. I think yeah. that's how they're going to tackle it. Yeah, because if you listen to the VFX teams, yeah, it was um, it was a hell show. <laughs> you didn't want to be yeah. on the team working on all that stuff. I mean, you know, I always go back to the quality of after season one, if you watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. at their peak, their episodes were costing maximum of $2 million. But some of those visuals, THX was knocking it out of the park because yeah, yeah. they knew the vision. It was written far in advance and they 
literally, if you watch some of those special features on the DVDs and stuff they revealed, they're like, okay, we got a sequence coming up with a Quinjet that ties into Age of Ultron. We have six months to work on this. And they work on it, and then they get the shots of the actors. They merge them. It looked on par with the films. And they lost that. Not quite, but yeah, I get what you say. Yeah. Yeah, you get, like, you know, for the Quinjet flying through the sky and breaking up, you're like, wow. Like, look at all those particles. and Like, it looked so good. And then, you know, like, now you got the She-Hulk, and they're like, hey, we got three weeks to finish this episode, and we need to re-render the ending because we changed it. It's like, oh, my God. Like, yeah, it's, it's, uh... it's not attainable, you know? Like, it's... it's a I mean, Sony Animation would have you say otherwise. <laughs> Yeah, you know, let's let's add in the ending of this movie the week before it comes out. Yeah, that's wild. Um, but yeah, it's VFX artists need a bit of recognition from these mm-hmm. people because if you're going to rely on it more, you have to realize, like, if you're going to change some stuff, you're going to have to delay the movie. Yeah, Otherwise, you're going to end up with slightly flat textures. Right, right, right. No, because no, I, I I still stand by the CGI and She Hulk isn't horrendous like yes no. some things are flatter than others like some things she looks yeah vastly different some things she looks vastly better but i i still think for what we how it turned out it's not the worst thing i've ever seen no like every shot of her close-up looks phenomenal yeah but yeah. every foot she stands back you lose textures because they were doing that video game thing where if a character is further away you use a lower quality model because it saves you rendering and you can tell with she hulk because it's like Mm. if she's 10 feet from the camera she has no like skin pores or anything she's just a straight up green shade and then she's straight up to the camera you're like oh wow i can see literally all the wrinkles and everything like it's and then hulk hulk looks great in every scene he's in because they were just yeah, using the yeah. model that they designed. So it's like, it was... Then they a... had to uh, cut the budget on the kid's hair. Oh, Jesus That's Christ. Don't even it. don't even mention him. <laughs> the nightmares. I Star genuinely forgot terrible. the name, and that's why I said the kid. Like, I sat there, my brain yeah. went, I have no idea what this kid's name is anymore. Scar looked horrific. That's it's, the one, yeah. Yeah. Um, so... I mean, even um, his face was like, yeah, I had this haircut because budget. Yeah. Now... I did want to add, a, I guess this is going to be a subtopic where I want to devote a little bit of time to specifically talk about Avengers 5 and Avengers Secret Wars. Because we just got, like, Disney a couple weeks ago sent out some new stuff to everybody talking about the future of Disney. And Marvel had a prominent section talking about all the upcoming content. Avengers 5 is officially Avengers 5. They scrapped the Kang Dynasty subtitle from it. It is no longer called that. So they're definitely changing what it is. Yeah. And right well, before that, we heard a rumor that Kang is going to take the back seat and a new villain mm-hmm. is going to be at the mm-hmm. forefront. So what direction yeah. are they going in? Like, I mean, you could just simply call it time runs out. Yeah. Honest Avengers time runs out. You're doing Hickman Secret Wars regardless. I don't care what anyone says. They're doing yep. Hickman's version of that thing. Why not have the first one be that? No. Yeah. Because you, you don't want an you know, you got Age of Ultron, Kang Dynasty. Like it's all to do with time anyway. So that's your, obviously your naming convention. Like if it's not war in the title, mm-hmm. so, hey, just there you go. Put time runs out. It's something like that. Or if you're heavily leaning into this is the prelude to secret wars which it obviously is you could do avengers siege like hey multiverses are crashing it's like a siege right or avengers yeah but then you're taking Uh, siege away from the actual name of the arc look they will never do the siege comic oh they will (laughs) they are 100 percent. the second we get osborne you you watch the first thing we get with norman osborne in the mcu and the reason why (laughs) he's not in new york is he's too angry at the, the immigrants in I cannot remember where the Asgard yeah, is yeah. yet now. Honestly, oh, is you it, could. Is it, it's not Norway, is it? I know I it's some Scandinavian remember. country, Dude, it's, like Finland or somewhere. I can't believe it's been like 15 years since that arc or whatever. It's been forever at this point. Or it's like 10, yeah. something like that. You know, he, 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 Osborne's just been seething quietly in the corner. 
that there's yeah. no humans in Europe. He's been watching too many YouTubers talking about it. He's like, ah, this is what I'm going to do. Execute the grifter <laughs> plan. Siege, it's coming. Uh, Goblins and gamers, you, done. Yeah. God, oh my God. I think you're right, though. Like, I think Time Runs Out is a perfect subtitle for this. Like, mm. Marvel Studios Avengers Time Runs Out. Automatically, everybody's like, hold up. What do you mean time runs out? Time runs out for what? And then you see the trailer. It's like, oh, oh, wow. Look at all these other characters and destruction of multiverse. Every planet is exploding. What's going on? Yeah. Like, I, I honestly something... don't know how they're even going to do because it's going to have to be like two end games back to back. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> this isn't Infinity War end game. This is end game to end game. That's literally yeah. what the two films got. I mean, you're going to see a bunch of people complaining that they can't hold. Uh, hold it in while watching all that because it's going to be like four or five movies at like four hours a piece. Uh, well, I mean, hey, P- the uh, three hour <laughs> Avengers movie made like three billion. So I imagine I mean, four. I mean, four they did, but you also saw the like, comments from people saying I had to go so bad. That's I mean, because Americans had it. <laughs> some, but I, I've never understood it. The size of the drinks in movies, I, I know exactly why they do it because it gets you up and gets you. To, no, you get out of the screening. You're in. You're in the lobby. You buy where all the stuff is. Yeah. Uh, but the sheer. So, like, why are you drinking that much? Like, you know, you I don't want, want to get my extra pee. large it's, slurpee, Mitch. Extra you can have the slurpee. extra large one, but why drink it in five seconds? Because uh, I'm like, an American. Yeah. That's how. That's why. <laughs> because they run it now. <laughs> it's like if you pace it. You don't have to pee halfway through. Or well, you can big brain it. Don't spend the money on that. Don't but drink anything. Yeah. You know, you can it's, go without drinking something before. Right? So, but then I'll be thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> we'll drink beforehand and you won't be thirsty. Man. You're totally fine. You could tell Mitch is an American here. That's why. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's no. look, this film, they better be minimum of three hours because they know people will oh, sit yeah, through yeah. it. Like it's yeah. oh, it's they've also got a lot of work to do to claw people back to uh get those. Infinity War Endgame numbers again. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, uh huh. It's there's a lot of stuff going on here with Marvel Studios right now that you look at, you're like, well, you guys, you got an uphill battle. You definitely got that. And like, mm. also they they gotta. It's gonna be weird if you get to the next Avengers film, right? And suddenly, hey, here's Shang Chi. Okay, cool. But then. Here's all these other characters that show up, like I don't know, Daredevil and She Hulk. A lot of people are going to be like, "Who recruited them? And when? And what am I missing? And how are they now part of the core team?" Like, well, here's the thing, right? I, I don't think you have them as part. But for, the, for the Avengers, for the for the initial bit before Secret Wars all kicks off and goes to pot, right? You uh-huh. have a core recognizable team of Avengers, which they've been setting up. Right. Yeah, but then once that film's finished and you're in the Secret Wars movie, and everyone kind of, you then establish Battle World and how everything looks, you can then have the weirdest team going, like a Daredevil and a She Hulk, yeah, and yeah, whatever else. And it's going to be a different version, and you don't have to explain anything because you've already established this is not your reality, this is not yeah. what you're used to, this so, is something completely brand new and different. Therefore, I, the rules have changed. I think I kind of get what you're saying, and I agree with that. And- let's say we get to the end of Avengers five, right? It's going to be a big battle. Wong is a hundred percent going to be in it. When they ask Always for be, backup, yeah, yeah. you know, when they ask for backup, he's going to be like, you guys aren't going to believe what I've been doing while you guys have been doing other things. Opens up a portal. Here's your daredevil. If they Which, repeat you know, that portal scene again, I'm going to be so mad. Except do he's going to be like, Hey, <laughs> last time you wanted more, check this out. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I think you need to do the, the exact opposite. You've had a threat and then you've had everyone. Now you've got this big thing. You need a small team. Small Secret piece. Wars has got to be a small core team. I'm just completely random people. Right? Is it, <laughs> with the whole thing like that, you, you can have Daredevil. People can be like, well, what's Daredevil going to do? But because it's a multiverse thing, he can be completely different. You can give Daredevil superpowers. He's going to get like a Stark made suit that amplifies everything. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's. it's it's multiverse, right? It's battle world. You can literally do whatever. Remember, can, the yeah. thing was the wall, and Johnny was the sun <laughs> in Hickman's run. Like you can go crazy, crazy like that. You can, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like just, just so. merge everything. You know, have 
characters cross over, you know, you could have it like Miss Devil and it's Kamala Khan and Daredevil, right? Yeah. You can do you can. stuff like that. Uh, and that's, that's your character going forward. And that's the beauty then, of it as they can do whatever. Like, yeah, the whole mashup of characters, they can do it. They could literally be like, hey, in this multiverse, Loki has merged with, I don't know, Spider-Man. You're like, sure. Okay. And obviously, they're going to bring in the other Spider-Man as well into... Oh, a hundred. Yeah, e easily, easily, yeah. Ease them in Avengers 5, maybe, but bring them into Avengers Secret Wars or whatever. I think you, you save know? it for Secret Wars. I think huh? you keep the, the Avengers 5 just... You, you keep it the smaller one, right? Like how Infinity War, despite being the, the, the bigger event, is the smaller scale story yeah so yeah i think you keep that structure the same but you just go all out with it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i mean yeah you could you really could so um we're definitely going to find out a lot this summer which is exciting i don't think disney's announced anything for san diego comic-con have they not oh, <laughs> well, uh, they're actually no. trying to murder stcc in plain sight true, with true. sd23 so there's no no chance yeah, no, if there uh, is, it's going to be absolutely like the nothing. The only thing I think that came out is that the I think pretty soon they'll be selling tickets. It's literally it at this point, but nothing announced at all. So, uh -huh. yeah, here's, for, here's, for here's what I want to know. Here's what I want to know, right? Do Marvel with the rest of this phase leading into Secret Wars just damage control it and try and get it out ASAP? Yes. <laughs> and then go like right, we we good at we just rip the bandage off on phase four, five, and six, right? And then yeah. we're gonna go into phase seven, fresh start, we're gonna knuckle down. Or mm -hmm. do they actively try and fix quote fix? The I think they're gonna stuff. announce Avengers five is like a reset point. That's honestly what I'm feeling. You're yeah. like, look, yeah. we finish up what we've started with phase four with avengers 5 whatever that is after the next movie after that here's your new concrete we are not deviating this is it take it or leave it it's like all right you yeah mm. it's i mean look i loved a majority of what they produced but even i can look at it as somebody that loves and goes yeah much of this didn't work <laughs> like you know i'm not blind I say, a, a lot of it works individually and separate mm -hmm. from everything else exactly. no, i'd love to see moon knight and this version of Moon Knight interact. Oh, with Hopefully, oh. we get that. Like, yeah. I'm not saying that Moon Knight's bad or anything, but I just it, an example of it working on its own. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's as you said. I, I enjoyed a lot of it. My screen just went black then, and I had a heart attack. <laughs> I genuinely thought I had a power cut. <laughs> but like, oh. uh, now enjoyed most of it. A lot of it you can take out and completely ignore. Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. this, the sheer, the sheer amount was too much, right? It yeah. was way too much. It, the the burnout is incredibly real. Yeah, I look and forward I mean, to not having burnout anymore. It's not like we technically had less content than ever before from Marvel. Because if you go back to Marvel Studios when DC EU was putting out all that stuff and like the CW, right? We were getting like three movies a year plus the Sony films, plus we were getting Agents of Shield multiple hulu shows multiple netflix shows a year but they were spread out so differently and like hey we dropped daredevil season two in one day so it didn't feel over bloated like it does today where it's like we were show on top of a show on top of another disney plus show on top of a movie it just perception changed you know and it showed so i also don't think it helps you've had these because of the whole covid thing yeah the, the, I was like, the, the pandemic and the, the the modern day black death right you, you had this period of from end game or no what was the last one to come up before the covid hit was it spider-man is it far from home i think yeah maybe I don't know. yeah I, I think it was you had this period where you had nothing for like a year and a half mm -hmm. then you suddenly had everything then it stopped then it started again and it stopped. And like every time he had something, it just threw everything at you. And it's like this is way if you just spread this out over like five years and we didn't have COVID, I think it would have been a lot different. But I think the way yeah. they tried to play catch up did not help in slightly. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So uh, hopefully going forward, we, they, they read it back and it's the... You know, I think three movies and three shows a year, you can do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or like four shows. You can have one like every quarter or whatever. But Right. Yeah, That's... I don't think you can survive with one literally running into the next mm -hmm. and overlapping. I think that's just the... Right. Exactly. So we'll see what they announce. Obviously, it's going to be a bit, but again, um, it's coming at us announcement, so we'll see. When is so, D23? Uh, just early, second week of August, so, and San Diego okay. Comic-Con like two weeks before that, so yeah. we'll see what happens. Um, cool. That has brought us to the end of the show. You know, I said it was probably going to be a shorter and terrible show, but we got an hour out of it, which is kind of a record. I told you we'd make it work. It, we stretched that out, I guess. I um, you. For, for those wondering, there are gonna there is gonna be a members topic. We're gonna talk about George Lucas, as I mentioned it. Uh, what we're actually gonna do, since that's just a topic that goes to everybody, we record it right after this, and then it'll just go up for you guys. Um, anybody wants that, just sign up to the channel membership. It'll be there. Uh, interesting things to talk about. So hopefully next week we got as full of a show that we can talk about various other things. You never know how it's gonna go. We'll see, I guess. No, it'll, so, be, it'll, be, it'll be a dead week. It yeah. might be, honestly. It might be. You, you watch. We'll get blown out of the war with everything now. Uh, James Gunn is officially going to announce that the uh, Huntress movie made in Korea or whatever they're working <laughs> on. One of my favorite characters of all time. Okay. Yeah. Well, I love this character of Huntress. One of the greatest characters of all time. She's going to fight my <laughs> other favorite character of all time. Uh condiment jimmy he's condiment man's uh, third removed cousin from the multiverse yeah. thanks he appeared in one hey, panel in this uh, half an issue hey don't don't make fun of condiment king he's awesome he's not Fair he's enough. a condiment jimmy i know yeah come but, on he's not making fun of the king so with that in it's mind nice, everybody let us know what your favorite condiment is down below and how james gunn will make him a villain let us know let, Let us know by go. trying English mustard because that's my favorite trend on TikTok right now. <laughs> Americans trying out English mustard is hilarious. <laughs> well, there you go, everybody. So until next week, go eat condiments, I guess. Later. <laughs>